Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, actually, okay, fine. Yeah. Okay. 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 Share uh, I, I have to enter the page in the tweet first. Maybe uh, oh now yeah. okay. Okay. Great. Now, if we go with the second talk, it will be given by Jia Yu Liu about hidden cosets, monogamy of entanglement, and applications to unclonable cryptography. Okay. Uh, hi. So I'm Jia Hui. I'll be talking about hidden cosets, monogamy of entanglement, and applications to unclonable cryptography. Uh, this is joint submission with Andrea Coladangelo, uh, Eric Kauf. Chipung Liu, Thomas Vidic, and Mark Zhangju. Uh, so as we know, uh, this is the famous no cloning theorem. So it says that given an arbitrary and unknown quantum state, it is impossible for us to turn it into two states, same as the original one. And uh, this principle actually gives us uh, power to build new cryptography uh, capabilities that cannot uh, be done in the classical world with only classical information. Uh, here are some examples of crypto protocols based, uh, uh, based on the no cloning principle of quantum information. Uh, the first, of course, uh, is the famous BB84 quantum key distribution, uh, where two parties can share uh, a secret key via a quantum channel. And another, uh, another uh, also famous but probably uh, slightly well, uh, uh, less well known, is quantum money, is that uh, a bank can, can issue quantum banknotes that nobody can forge. And other examples include quantum position verification, which we have just seen in the, pre, uh, in the previous talk. Uh, let's slightly get into more details uh, on what unclonable states we use in the protocols we just mentioned. Uh, so the BB84 state, which as we know is the, the conjugate coding uh, put forward by Wiesner, uh, uh, which he first used to do private key quantum money. Uh, this is using the QKD, using Wiesner's quantum money. And uh, also uh, in some recent uh, years, uh, there's recent work on unclonable encryption that also use the state. And uh, it's also used a lot in position verification. And we have seen in the, in the talk just now. And another state, also slightly uh, less well known, is uh, the subspace state put forward by Arison and Cristiano in 2012 uh, to realize public key quantum money. So public key quantum money is also called public verifiable quantum money. Uh, where the bank issues the money state, but everyone in the world can verify whether a quantum state is a valid bank note. It is later also using a scheme called quantum signature token by Ben David and Satas. Uh, we will soon talk about this, what this primitive means. And besides hard random states is often used. Uh, for example, in 2009's Arison's copy protection scheme, but it's less relevant to the constructions we will talk about. Uh, okay, so in this work, 
uh, we will propose a new notion called cozy states. Uh, it can be seen as a generalization of both subspace states and BB84 states. And this notion has been independently studied in a work by Bidik and Zhang in the context of proof uh, of quantum knowledge. And we show that in this work, cozy, uh, cozy states have important uh, properties of both BD, BB84 states and subspace states that help us build new crypto capabilities. So on a high level, what are some of these properties? Uh, the first property is that similar to subspace states, they have algebraic structures that can make them public verifiable. And in particular here, we can make them public verifiable in a plain model. Uh, that's what uh, cryptographers usually use in the world. Uh, use this word in the plain model, it just basically means we do, do not have to use oracles. Uh, the second thing is that it has a property uh, which subspace states don't have, but uh, BB84 states do. Uh, that is, it satisfy a monogamy of entanglement property. Using these pro uh, two properties, we can realize more powerful unclonable crypto primitives. Uh, let's look at some previous results. Um, so these are, these are two primitives we will mainly talk about today. And uh, these previous results uh, build them from subspace states. Uh, so as we mentioned, subspace states were used to do uh, quantum money, but besides it, signature token is uh, put forward by Ben David and Satas. It is basically a quantum signing scheme that allows you to sign one message using a quantum signing key. And uh, an unclonable decryption scheme here is a public key encryption scheme where the decryption key is a quantum state and is unclonable. Oh, sorry. And uh, these previous results, they use subspace states, but they show it relative to the security relative to some classical oracles. Uh, so what are classical oracles? They're basically a, a black box that implements a classical circuit, but you can query it in superposition if you're a quantum adversary. Uh, in cryptography words, we, we say these oracles are basically something called virtual black box obfuscation, short as VBB obfuscation here. And if you want to implement these oracles, you, you use such a crypto assumption to, to put, uh, put this obfuscation on, on a classical circuit. But however, uh, VBB obfuscation is assumption usually considered very strong uh, in the cryptography literature. And in this work, uh, we use cozy states to realize the same set of applications. Uh, but importantly, we can remove the use of oracles or VBB. We show that signature token and unclonable decryption in the plane model by assuming post-quantum uh, indistinguishability of buscation, short as IO and uh, one-way functions. And uh, in addition to unclonable decryption and signature token, which we just mentioned, we also realize uh, the first copy protection, uh, protection scheme for pseudo-random functions. And uh, that is a scheme where a user can get a quantum program that helps him evaluate a pseudo-random function, but he's not able to duplicate this functionality and ask someone else, someone else to use it together with him. So uh, let's uh, further motivate our work. So why, why should we care so much about the replacing the oracles with crypto assumptions? Uh, we demonstrate some important properties between the two assumptions. So as we mentioned, uh, VBB or Oracle is a very strong assumption. It says that a fast-cated program is computationally equivalent to, to access to an Oracle. And in fact, it is shown that it's generally impossible to realize VBB. Uh, basically, that means there will be no VBB of fast-cation construction that would work for all circuits. And uh, in particular, the constructions we just mentioned in previous works, they use uh, relatively structured oracles. So it's not like a random oracle with, which we can instantiate using hash functions or something else other than VBB. And on the other hand, uh, IO says that two functionally equivalent programs whose circuits may look different after you put them into the obfuscation, what comes out will be indistinguishable. And uh, IO for all polysized circuits can be built from well-founded crypto assumptions in some recent progress. And uh, there are even some post-quantum IO candidate constructions. Um, okay, and uh, one last thing to mention is that uh, to show the security of unclonable decryption and copy protection of PRFs, uh, we, at first we, we relied on a conjecture. So we conjecture, conjecture that these cosine states satisfy something called a strong monogamy of entanglement property. But this property is then proved by Kalf and Vedic in a follow-up work. And uh, thus completing the entire picture here and we remove conjectures, we have clean statements and we made this QIP submission together. Okay, uh, so 
before introducing cosy states, let's look at what subspace states are. So a subspace state for a space A is a uniform superposition of vectors in subspace A. And uh, this A is sampled by Challenger uh, randomly and uh, its basis information is kept secret from the users or, or the adversaries. It has the property that if you apply a QFT, which I read as like a bit by bit head mark here for the binary case, uh, you'll get superposition of vectors in the in a perp, uh, that is the dual subspace of A. And uh, we also uh, provide two functionalities. Um, here uh, we call the membership checking programs, PA and PA perp. So PA takes, uh, takes in uh, input vector and outputs one if and only if the input vector is in A. And normally we would consider it has to be a non-zero vector. And uh, similarly for PA perp, Let's view them as oracles for now, where you can only access them in a black box way. Um, so subspace states uh, have this important property that uh, our security and the security of previous uh, works rely on. Uh, we call it direct product harness as it was originally uh, called in Arison Cristiano's um, quantum money papers appendix. Uh, we consider the following problem. When we give a quantum adversary one copy of the subspace state A, and access to the membership oracles PA and PA perp. And this adversary is polynomially bounded in queries to the oracles. Such an adversary um, cannot produce two non-zero vectors, one in A and the other in A perp. And uh, it, you can view it as a version of the uncertainty principle. Uh, so uh, the signature token scheme is the first primitive, the first construction we will talk about, and we will show how we can build it from subspace states. Uh, let's, uh, uh, let's give a slightly more formal definition. So it is very similar to a signature scheme. A signer can sign a message given a signing key and anyone can verify the validity of the signature using the public verification key. But here, the signing key is something we call a signing token that allows you to only sign one message and it is a quantum state. Basically, when you sign a message, you would consume the state. And the security guarantees that no efficient adversary can sign two different messages given one signing token. Here, if we consider for simplicity, just one bit messages, he can only sign either zero or one. Okay, so we would give a natural mapping from the direct product harness uh, to the security of signature token. So to output a, a valid signature for uh, message zero, you have to output a valid ve non-zero vector in A. And uh, to output a message for one, you output a message in a perp. And the, uh, the signature token is basically just the subspace state. And uh, the verification keys are just the membership checking or uh, checking oracles. Here, when you, when you want to output a message, you just measure, measure your signature token in the basis you want. Okay, but as we mentioned, uh, this scheme, which was first put forward by Ben David and Satas, uh, the drawback is mainly that the, the, uh, the security is proved only relative to oracles, which are just uh, the verification keys used here. And our first goal is to achieve this construction in the plane model to replace these oracles with IO. So why, why do you think it's plausible? Because actually something similar was done previously. Uh, so for Arison Cristiano's uh, public quantum money scheme, they also first only showed the security relative to these, uh, the, exactly the same set of oracles. And later on January in 2019, uh, instantiate these oracles with IO and one-way functions uh, to build something called subspace hiding of cascader. And the quantum money security will be shown using IO and one-way functions. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, it cannot be applied to our case because in fact, the direct product harness we use in the signature token scheme is a stronger property uh, than, the, uh, than, the, the, uh, sorry, than the security required by the public key quantum money. Uh, quantum money protocol. And uh, the same reduction uh, using gender self-fascator would fail for us. Uh, so to fix this gap, we, we put forward cosy states. Uh, a cosy state uh, can be seen as a quanta, quantum, uh, quantum one-time padded subspace state. Uh, we se select two random strings S and S prime. We add S in the computational basis and we add S prime to the state in the Hadamard basis. So now we get a state uh, that's shifted by these two secret strings. Uh, and also we still provide the membership checking programs. Now they are cosy membership checking programs that, uh, that are also shifted by S and S prime. 
uh, respectively. And the using the uh, COSET states, we actually realize the security we want under IO. That is given to obfuscated programs that can perform the uh, membership checking functionalities for the COSET A plus S and uh, COSET A per plus S prime and given one copy of the COSET state. Uh, no efficient adversary is able to produce two vectors, one in the uh, primal COSET A plus S and the other in the dual COSET A per plus S prime. And uh, uh, the very high level intuition uh, why this work, uh, which we don't have time to go into details is that uh, the COSET version of direct product is just a harder problem for the adversary. Uh, it only, not only has to find like any two vectors in the subspace, but has to find the secrets as well. And uh, would require fewer assumptions when we do it in the computational setting. And now uh, naturally we would still have the same mapping to get, to get signature token from COSET states. Uh, to output valid signatures, so you, uh, you measure your COSET state either in the computational basis or in the headmark basis. And to do verification, you use the IO, uh, IO programs that check the, the membership uh, to check wh uh, whether a signature is valid. And now we can do it in the plain model. Okay, uh, very simple. We can conclude our first part. So COSES, they satisfy a computational direct product harness property using IO and one-way functions. And uh, we can therefore get signature token scheme without oracles. Uh, now we can come to the second part of our talk is that uh, there's something we call monogamy of entanglement property uh, also possessed by the COSET states. Uh, so this property, uh, we can use it to construct, uh, construct even stronger unclonable primitives. Uh, clearly this name, uh, this name monogamy of entanglement comes from the quantum property, which is a general, very general property that says Alice can only be maximally entangled with one of Bob or Charlie, but not both. And the monogamy of entanglement property was first studied uh, for BB84 states uh, in this paper. And, uh, uh, and uh, they use it to do a lot of pro uh, like interesting protocols such as position verification uh, mentioned in the previous talk. And we would study uh, uh, analogous property for COSET states in this work. Uh, so what's a monogamy of entanglement game? So here we present something we call a strong monogamy of entanglement game for COSET states. Uh, in the first stage, the challenger prepares this COSET state and keeps, uh, keeps the, the, the subspace description uh, S and also S prime secret, of course, only to himself. And he gives one copy of the state to Alice. The Alice uh, prepares two registers, uh, two quantum states, row one and row two, and gives them to Bob and Charlie, sorry, uh, respectively. And then in the second stage, where Bob and Charlie cannot communicate, the challenger gives the description of subspace A explicitly to Bob and Charlie. No obfuscation, just the basis description. And they need to output S and S prime respectively. So Bob has to output S, Charlie has to output S prime. And here we can show that the adversaries cannot win this game uh, with larger than exponential, uh, exponentially small prob uh, probability. And this is called uh, as monogamy of entanglement because from actually from another point of view, we can say that Bob and Charlie both try to be maximally entangled with Alice to gain the information. And we also uh, call it strong game because it is stronger than a regular monogamy of entanglement property, which is for example, considered for BB84 that uh, Bob and Charlie both have to output uh, something symmetric. For example, here we would ask Bob and Charlie both to output S and S prime on their own. And that would be a weaker game. Um, and that's why this, uh, we call this game the strong one. And the, given the previous prob uh, uh, property, which is information theoretic, uh, now we add something computational to the game. We can show that even if we give, we, we also give the obfuscated uh, programs for checking the membership of the COSET, um, to the adversaries, they will still be not uh, be, uh, be able to do better, and they would uh, uh, they would still not uh, be able to win this game, other than negligible probability. And together, we would use this property to build the next property we want to talk about. Uh, this is unclonable decryption. We now can take uh, take a look at the unclonable decryption game. So it is quite similar to the monogamy game. Uh, we give, uh, we first give a public key, classical public key and a quantum decryption key. 
to adversary Alice. And then Alice generates two states, row one and row two, give them to Bob and Charlie, who cannot communicate anymore. And we now prepare to, uh, to ciphertext of the message, give them to both Bob and Charlie. And finally, they need to come out with the correct message, both of them. Uh, we, can, we can now give a, con a construction of unknowable decryption scheme from the monogamy, computational monogamy property of coset states. So in our construction, uh, the public key are the, the I.O. programs, just like in the signature construction. And the, the decryption key is the coset state, of course. And when we do encryption, the ciphertext are a, a, a kind of obfuscated programs that would output the message if, on, uh, if and only if uh, the input is a valid vector uh, in a corresponding coset, uh, a coset corresponding to a random string that's selected upon encryption. And uh, here it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a very simplified version of the actual construction. And I can give the very high level intuition for showing security. It is that if there exists an adversary that can make both Bob and Charlie output the correct message, then we can extract the secret S from Bob and extract the secret S prime from Charlie's from their, their, uh, their internal quantum state. And this would violate the underlying lower bound for the monogamy of entanglement gate. And this step requires a, a delicate argument and we will invoke the security of a cryptography primitive called compute and compare, and which can be uh, built from IO or lattice. So now we can summarize our second part. We'll conclude that coset states satisfy this strong computational MOE property uh, and using IO and one-way function. And therefore we can get unclonable decryption in the plane model that is without oracles. And furthermore, something we don't have time to get into more details is that from the unclonable decryption, we can further build copy protection for PRFs. And this transformation requires uh, uh, some classical IO trick called hidden trigger. Uh, it's also non-trivial part of uh, transformation. And uh, okay, let's give a, a, a conclusion for, for the larger picture. So we have talked about the two main properties of coset states. They take the good sides of both pub, uh, subspace states and BB84 states. Uh, make them public verifiable in the plane model. And they also have a secret in the computational basis and a secret uh, in the Hadamard basis that can be used for extraction for the security proof. And these would give in, interesting applications. So at first, uh, so at least they would give the same applications as what uh, subspace states and BB84 states would give us. But most importantly, they, they give us more. And uh, regarding some uh, related works and follow-ups. Uh, so there's a follow-up work with, which will be online to, uh, in one of the online QIP talks tomorrow. Uh, I think it's uh, the, uh, one of the best student papers, but, uh, but it, it will be at a very unfriendly time for the US people, I think. Um, it shows that uh, we, uh, so uh, Shimueli shows that we can actually prepare uh, the coset states. Uh, via a classical channel. We can delegate this preparation of coset states via a classical channel using quantum FHE. And uh, also in one of the plenary talks, uh, we have already seen another variant called uh, Gaussian coset states pro, uh, put forward by Porumba. It can be used to augment certified deletion with fully homomorphic properties. And uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much for this nice talk. Any questions? So it seems like your uh, signature tokens are really for a one-time signature scheme. Am I correct? Like, mm. let's say I get two signature tokens. Is it possible to sign more than two messages? Uh, yes, exactly. So, so, uh, so if we uh, give the adversaries the same state as a. Uh, 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 twice uh, he, he would be able to break the scheme. Uh, so when we want to sign a multiple a message, we would give them uh, so a different subspace, a freshly re uh, sampled subspace state every time. And uh, it is also a one time, uh, it is one time of course by the, by the, in the sense that you can only sign once, afterwards you would consume the state. And it's also one time secure in the sense, as you mentioned, if we give them the same key twice, uh, he will be able to like sign any message afterwards. And uh, uh, the thing is also, it's not uh, existential, uh, unforgeable in the sense that if you are able to query the signing oracle uh, many times, you would be able to 
gain the power of signing like trivially. So actually we, we have a follow-up work that we, we show we can build on clonable signatures that also satisfy the standard security, like un, unford, uh, existential, unfordable and uh, multi-time uh, multi secure. Okay, so I guess uh, if I want to keep the public key to be fixed and give multiple signature tokens, then is that an open problem? Uh, sorry, what do you mean by, uh, is that, you mean the exact same scheme here or it's like a more general? No, no, no. So, so you are suggesting giving two different uh, coset states, but yes. then the public key would change, right? Oh, right, it would right, be right. So, so, you so can, I want the yeah. same public key and I want to give, let's say, multiple tokens. Oh, okay. So in that scheme, you would, uh, we would have a... Uh, 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 so when we publish uh, the public key, so for example, we want to want the users to sign n bit messages, we would sample n different subspace states, and we prepare the uh, the public keys as like n different uh, n uh, I/O programs, right? And uh, then then the signature token would be like an n subspace states tensored. So so it depends on yeah, you, you have to set up like the bound on the, the, the message that you want to sign, right? So afterwards, you that would fix what public keys and uh, Secret keys you give out. Mm. Okay, thank you. I also had one question. Can you maybe go back to the slide where you showed the monogamy of entanglement game? Okay. Uh, yeah. One, uh, let me see. A little bit before. Oh, okay. Yeah. This one. Yeah. So in the regular, um, monogamy entanglement game without cosets you don't have this state that goes in it holds basically for any state um you can just you can kind of look at the purified version of the protocol where you would um kind of have alice measure later on in in either of the bases so i'm wondering whether you can do something like that as well or do you need this particular state to go in um oh so i think actually uh, in the work uh, by eric a cough, which is uh, like show this property, they, they follow, uh, they sort of formulated this COSET uh, monogamy game into another game called basis monogamy. I think that is like uh, similar to the, the case you, you talk about, where we can just formulate everything, for example, like, uh, like the challenger series, like EPRs with one of them, and later uh, on, okay. they'd be measuring like the random basis, right? Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, so you, you can formulate game into right. that sense. Yeah. Mm. Thanks a lot. Mm. All right, thank you for the talk.